Hi, Above Life Channel, it's Bridget. Today, I have a really great channel for you. Now, I have felt this individual from time to time. He is someone who has recently crossed over at the time of this particular video. I am recording this in October 2018. It's actually October 23rd. Now, I felt like it was time to speak with this individual because there were some signs from the universe it was time. Not only is it getting close to the United States elections, which would be important to this particular spirit, but also I was standing at a Barnes & Noble, a local bookstore, and right in front of me was a a magazine with his picture on it like in my face and just prior to that actually I had been thinking about how interesting it would be to channel him to speak with him in the afterlife and so here we are today I actually tried to channel somebody else but during the channel I was so distracted and I felt so much like I was in an altered state like someone else was trying to get my attention and I couldn't tap into who that was so I left that recording and I went and did some other things in human life, you know, I had a salad, had some lunch, had some water, and all of a sudden, bam, I watched the recording that I had done and I recognized who the energy was. And it was, are you ready? It was Senator John McCain. Senator John McCain. Now I recognize that he made his transition into the afterlife, into full on spirit a few months ago. I think a month and a half or so ago. I'm thinking it was like the end of August or September. And so because he wants to talk, like I even told my husband out loud in the kitchen last week, I'm like, when I was doing a bunch of channeling, I said, you know who I really should do, John McCain, because he wants to talk. So let's hear what he has to say. All right. I personally feel John McCain is a very um, unity type of an individual. He has a great sense of country and patriotism. When you're thinking of a patriot, that's who you should think of. He has a, sets a good example for um, working with others who have different or competing interests. And although my party affiliation is not in alignment with his, let's just say that, like not close. I personally still feel uh, I have a lot of respect for him and um, I should also share that I grew up in a very politically active advocate um, activist style family both my parents were very much active in politics as I grew up so I was raised in the political environment and also I went to college for political science that's one of my one of my bachelor's degrees one of my undergrad degrees is that and I worked in government for like 10 years so uh, yeah so <laughs> I have a great deal of respect for him. So it is my pleasure, sir, to welcome you and come on in, please. He leans forward. He has a really genuine smile, very authentic. And he says, thank you, Bridget. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm like, oh, you're very welcome. You're, it, it's very nice. It's very nice to meet you. It really, it really truly is. Thank you. Yes. So I have so many questions for you, um, but I know, that I feel like you want the floor, which is interesting, um, Senator, because I feel like I've not really had a lot of that experience with Spirit in the Afterlife on Above Life channel here. I haven't had a lot of experience with spirits coming to me or wanting to talk, wanting to talk so soon after their transition. So that's new, this is new for me. And I can feel you really, um, it's easy to, to feel you. And so share with me. So you recently transitioned last month or so. He said, yeah, it's been about seven weeks or so, seven and a half weeks. Okay. And can you share a little bit about what it's like for you entering into spirit? It's a totally new arena for you. What is it like to be spirit in, in spirit? Can you describe that to us, Senator? He has a little bit of a, when he talks, he kind of talks up a little bit, uh, almost like a little bit of a nose kind of thing, or maybe an accent with his a little bit Southern-ish like-esque, like a little Texas or something, I'm not sure. I know he's from Arizona. I know you're, so the Senator in Arizona um, was your service. 
Um, but it sounds like he kind of he kind of thinks like God got something a little bit like this, but not not too bad. And uh, okay. He's sharing with me being reunited with family. He thinks that's a very important thing to share with others. Those who are watching your channel, he says, would benefit greatly to know that uh, loved ones greeted me because then in turn for their own end of life experiences, that may be something very comforting to know. Yes, my grandmother, and he shows me someone named um, Dal, Dolly, Dolly, D A L I, D A, D A I or D A L, I can't quite see. Remember, I'm clairvoyant, you guys, so I try to see the words if I can't actually hear them. Dolly, Dahlia, Dolly, no, not Dahlia, Dolly, Dolly, Dolly. Um, there's a grandmother that greeted him very warmly, hugging and loving on him. Um, he says, You know, my mother's here. She came to my funeral and she sa he says right away, no parent should ever bury a child. No mother should ever bury a son. Okay. My mother is very strong. She is much stronger than I, and she's got grit. You would like her very much. You, you, the two of you would get along very well. She's sort of along the lines of an Eleanor Roosevelt type for you, for your reference, he says to me. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Oh, very interesting. All right. So talk about what does it feel like? Like um, in human terms, we have senses, right? So we feel things, we sense or feel, and that's a really close bond with the spirit in the afterlife, with our personal spirit here as we're people, but also with the spirit in the afterlife. Can you talk a little bit about how it feels? How does it feel to be a spirit? I mean, is it different? You know, how, did, how is it different than being a person? He says... <laughs> There's less fighting, there's less argument. And then I literally see the floor of the Senate, the, the rich carpet, and then all the rows of the, the chairs and the wood. Um, and he kind of raps on the side. He's standing in the center of the aisle and he kind of raps or taps on a desk that's right on the edge. And he says, it's quite different. He says, but it's not foreign, it's not obscure or unreal or unrealistic. You know, I had a certain degree of faith, amount of faith that have, that has brought me through many things in my lifetime. And I believe it was that faith that was my, that was my lifeboat as I recognized the body was dying. And I did feel in the body, in human terms, a great deal of pain and a tremendous amount of headaches and difficulty in remembering. And there was most certainly a struggle for consciousness to be alert for my family and friends who came to see me, to visit me. But many, unfortunately, I'm sure were disappointed in the condition in the perceived deterioration and the, the quickness, the, the rapid pace at which my body died. As a new member of the afterlife, I can share with you with great certainty that whatever faith you hold, whatever belief you have in higher consciousness, as you, Bridget, would say, Whatever belief you have will be manifest for you. So it's important to be in full awareness of your beliefs and your values and to be in integrity as you move in to a new part of life existence. It's simply a new chapter and it's an extension of the energy that you brought into the world as a human that was always living within you. And some refer to that as your, your Christ, 
conscious awareness inside of you. You refer to it as your solar plexus, spirit, intuition, God, whatever type of term you want to use for it, but that part of you doesn't die. There's no deterioration of it. There's only a covering up of it. And that covering up is sort of a, a compromise with your human brain. The human mind is fascinating. And yet it is our worst enemy. Our mind is our own worst enemy. And just take a look, look at the landscape before you now and watch, watch the unfolding of the, the rhetoric, the misunderstandings that you can see as you hear the words, you can see it on, human, on the human face, what the real context is and what the true value or belief of that particular person as a human being is, regardless of what they've claimed or state as fact. And no, to answer your question, Bridget, I am not referring to any particular human. There is a level of uh, integrity that also encompasses the spirit and the soul and the afterlife. And there is a true, true honoring and recognition for the beauty of life itself and the preciousness and the fragility that humans are living. It is a very fragile life. And some might look at it as a flower and just adore it and love it for as long as they can. And others might see it as tragedy waiting to happen, death looming at your door. So it really depends on the way you look at life, the glass half full, half empty theory. Well, perhaps there's no glass at all. There's no need to confine or define the energy that is housed inside of you, the capacity that lives within you. That is the truest gift of the spirit. And that is the most powerful lesson, the most powerful. Well, if you would describe it as like a Superman power, that would be it in the afterlife. And, and I do feel as though I am a super being because I am completely welcomed in to all types of former human essence, energy, existence. I can't quite get the word, Senator. The human existence, there is no individualism. There is only unity. You said it yourself. What the, that is a powerful word. That is how I would describe the feeling and feeling is in the context of your human senses as you set out in the question, the format. And you see, so I do, yes, I do have advice. So he's talking and I'm ask, kind of ask, starting to ask questions in my head and he's just responding to them, which is pretty cool when that happens. The advice that I would give is look with your heart. Look with your heart, through the eyes of your heart. That is where you are clear. That is where you are clear. So if you see something, a news clip, for example, on the media, and, it, and it, it evokes a sadness within you and it makes you feel sad and mournful, then allow yourself the gift of the human emotion. Through the emotion is what connects you. It connects you. And this point of contact is a soul acknowledging a soul. The unification, we are one. You feel, I feel. Therefore, we are connected. But make no mistake, life is not a string of reactions or responses to what is external. It is much more the point of living to recognize that you are the epicenter, you are the focal point of the source of whatever you wish to feel, to engage in, to create for you the atmosphere for those around you that are affected by your what you inflict what you feel resonates out it does carry forward and that comes through even if you try to hide your feelings or your emotions look at the human face it says so much to the spirit the human face gives so much it says he's trying to say it says so much it shows the spirit 
the true intention, you feel that, you feel that, and that connects you, that gives you a level of understanding. It gives you a level of understanding, but it also can provide an open door for compassion. And you can disagree with others, but you can respect and accept that their values are in alignment with their heart and who they are at the source of who they are, not something that changes just depending upon popular opinion, opinion, but rather a part of who they are. And when they stand in that, you can see it and you feel, you feel it, you know, and even if you disagree, you can disagree and still have respect for the, for the nature of the, I've used the word integrity so many times, but for the, the depth of thought, the depth of alignment that creates that individual's beliefs and values. And you can honor that process of creating the person. Even if you disagree, I want to be really clear on that. In, in the afterlife, yes, there is contrast in the human life, but in, in the energetic state that I am in now, there's only pure, the purity comes in the, the love and the light and the true understanding. The reflection of looking back upon the human experience is, is quite, it's quite incredible because it's such a small, it's like a blink just a blink as far as a time. It's, it truly is so fast. And it's kind of ironic, you know, the term the speed of light, the phrase speed of light. That's how we move through life to get to pure spirit form. And there is something though that feels quite accomplished when you are the moments before your death, the moments before the body ends, before the termination occurs and the final cords are cut and released, there is a moment that you can reflect upon and acknowledge, wow, what a ride, what a ride. Look at what I have had, I have been fortunate enough to experience and even the difficult times yes can you talk about that when you look back i mean senator you were a vietnam war hero i mean you what you did for your your team and the suffering that you must have endured is just incredible to even comprehend any of that and the long-term impacts of that, that's a significant life event, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Most definitely, yes. Did you learn something particular from that particular event or were there other, are there other really big things as well that maybe other people don't know about or recognize as really pivotal moments? And, and through that experience, did you, let's talk, let's talk about that experience if you're open to doing that. You know, and he says, it's not, he's very humble. He says, it's not that big of a, I, I try not to dwell on it. Others make much more of a fuss about it than I. It was a time that I did what I needed to do for myself and for others and to give back to those who have given to me so generously and completely. My family time, the time lost with my family, my children, is something that I can't repair or correct. And, and to answer your question that you're asking, <laughs> he says, there is, no, there is no regret, even through the pain and the difficulty and the darkness, there is a hope 
my faith was brought so much stronger. And when I say faith, I don't mean a particular religion or affiliation. I don't mean a human uh, viewfinder of what that is. I mean faith in the context of the truth of your spirit and the understanding at the depths of you that you are not alone. This is not a solo journey. This is a, a, a journey that is united and it's championing peace, that peace within you and the, the choice of your own morale, not morality, he says, morale. The attitude at which you perceive the things that are happening to you or the, the decisions you have to make, whatever, whatever it may be. One, I would say to people who are listening, one event does not have to define who you are for the rest of your life. It doesn't make or break you in that moment. Any event, any experience that you have, whether significant or seemingly insignificant, can form you. It can form a point at which you will reference. And these reference points are simply that, a reference. They are not a definition. There is not a scripted process to move through your life, to create the reality that you have. There is not a scripted process. Rather, it's more of a collection, uh, like a rock collection, collecting things or collecting pins. He's showing me collecting pins or collecting rocks. Like we like rocks in our family, so maybe that's what. But pins, he's showing me like these pretty pins and stuff. Or, oh, are you showing me like a, like decorations, like little, like these little square, the square things that like people get. Oh, you guys, I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody in the military or the service, but I don't have, I'm not yeah, I'm really well versed in that because I don't, that's not in my immediate family or anything. So little pins like uh, recognition, accolades, I would say. It's like collecting pins. That's all they really are is pins. Oh. Okay, I see a lot of sunlight around him. He looks very happy, his cheeks are really full and his smile is very bright. And um, he's very proud of his family, his children. And he says, my legacy is my family. I know there's probably a lot of commentary about what my legacy is or my role in history. But I know that my legacy is my family. And that's a pretty, pretty darn good, pretty darn good one. I left the world in good hands with my family. Okay. There's so much I'd love to chat with you about, John. Um, I don't want to get too political, but that's like the whole nature of your life. <laughs> you know? He says, ah, 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 patriotism and politics can be two very different things. Patriotism and politics can be two very different things, he says. So you'd like to be remembered as a, someone who loved my country. That's what he says. I loved my country. I believed in the core values that the country was founded on and that is something that will never be broken. That is a bond that can never be broken. When I think of you, um, Senator, I think of courage. And so, in bravery. And I'm not just speaking of the story about you and during the war, but I'm think, speaking of you throughout um, lots of moments where I, you know, maybe didn't agree with you and some of your politics, honestly, and forthright, being forthright. But as a person and as a leader, I think you are one very courageous confident and well-spoken person and i think you have a level of integrity that i personally respect a great deal 
and I know that many will miss you, especially during this next election and in the coming years. You'll be remembered. And he says, oh, thank you. Thank you. He's just very kind. He's like, thank you. Like, very humble. Like, oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. If you'd like, we could talk again. I'm curious who you've met in the afterlife, you know, famous political types. He says, oh, my favorite. He says, oh, Bridget, that's a great question. My favorite is FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He is my favorite, my very favorite. And then he shows me General George Washington also. He says, you know, everybody, he's like, he said, it's hard to pick. There's so many wonderful, um, there were so many wonderful people and now we're all spirits. So it's, it's a bit different, but Franklin Delano Roosevelt is my favorite. And then General George Washington, he says, <laughs> okay. All right, great. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. He says, thank you for listening to me. <laughs> because he interrupted one of my, <laughs> my other channel. This has been great, Senator McCain. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you as well. Thank you for watching, regardless of your political sway. <laughs> You've kind of seen some insight into mine. I bet you couldn't I bet you could have guessed that anyway. Oh, thank you so much for watching. This has been a discussion in the Afterlife at Above Life channel with Senator John McCain. Remember, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill your heart with hope. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you have additional questions or suggestions for future videos, go ahead and put it in the comments below. I try to read the comments weekly. As well, don't forget to subscribe so you can never miss a new weekly channeling conversation. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. Remember, this is your life, so live it. Thanks for watching.